Hey there, Dengas Chu here. Today's video is on turning a boat hull from this into this. step in getting this boat cleaned up and painted was to get it upside down like this obviously and fortunately uh, Dave was around to give me a hand with that so we'll pick up there. So the plan is to drive out slowly, is to tie the boat to the bench, drag the trailer that way, pull the shelves over and then think of another plan. So this is already nice connected. The cleats. Uh, around the bench. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Fine. Oh, there's a copy dex around here. Remember that? What is that? Copy dex. That really smelly white gleaming at the school. Oh, okay. Is that bolted to the floor, that one? Huh? And if the bolts to the floor? No. If we go slow, and then just watch it. Yeah. It'll be alright. You feeling confident? I'm feeling confident. Do you think it defenders up to it? <laughs> Do so I need to put it in the high low ratio gearbox? Definitely low range. What's the other one called? Low range, full drive. It's got flick. Oh no, dip lock. Dip lock, that's the one. <laughs> lock dick, hang on. <laughs> this leg's here, off-roader's rule. I'll go over there and watch. Okay. I'm leaving town. Okay. Good chat, see you later. Have you unattached it to the front of the trailer? Yep. You sure? Yep. Here we go, keep going. Okay? Yeah, keep going. Alright. Yeah, yeah. I'm hitting you, please. That's alright. Oh, okay, hang on. Alright. Okay. You're gonna hit this arm of the hoist, but just keep going for now. Yeah, yeah keep going. Uh, another foot. Okay. That could have gone a lot worse. Um, go forward a smidge and then just try and drag a mine. And destroy the camera. <laughs> go backwards a little bit. On this side, too. Yep. And then if we can try and get it, I think it might slide. If I might get the rubbish out of Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um. Okay. Better dress up your toolbox a bit. Well, it's actually still not too bad. Oh, God, it stinks. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, hang on. So this is what we're up against. It's actually not too bad pedals. It's not, it's just the edges, isn't it? The edges, and you can see here, so this hull 
originally was sanded right back, clean with some acetone, then painted with epoxy. Just bits of daylight, so these bits. See these bits? Oh wow. Remember we epoxied the whole thing, mm. but that's the epoxy come off the aluminium. Wow. So what if I do more, well if I do more epoxy, I might have to do some sort of etch primer or something. I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but this is where this paint has bubbled up. And this is almost always because there's that aluminium salt corrosion underneath that separated the paint from the, the metal and then filled that space. So you can see this white stuff. So what I'm going to do is begin a pretty laborious process, just finding all these weak patches, scraping them initially, and then sanding them back. Pretty dull job, but I'll get it in, get that happening, and then we'll see what we're left with after that. After many hours of scraping, this is as far as I've got. I'll take the camera over and I'll show you. Uh, the plan now is just to take it outside and put some power sander on it. I've scraped as much as I can. Well, as much as I'm willing to, let's be honest. <laughs> and I'll show you what's left and I'll justify to you and myself why I'm gonna leave it there. Most of the barnacles are off now and this is an epoxy coating. The very first time I did this hull, I sanded the entire thing down to bright metal and put this coat of epoxy on first. It's stuck really well in some places and it came off really, really easily in others. So what I've done is I've gone through, got all the barnacles off and then taken all the epoxy off wherever it was bubbled or flaking or anything like that. Big part of me thinks I should sand it right back to metal again, but there's a few reasons I don't want to. It's very old aluminium, so I don't want to sit there and go and take more aluminium off again. And I really would like to start building up layers of this stuff. This is quite a light hull, and I'm very happy for it to slowly gain more layers of primer and epoxies and whatever I end up using in order to make the boat a bit heavier and also to keep the hull as strong as I can. David! Yep, David! <laughs> I can't buy any computer. Alright. Evening. Evening. So what am I doing? I'm holding this, the tripod. No, we're going to no, put the camera up. I am the tripod. No. You are the tripod. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you feel strong? Yeah. Why are we putting an anode on this? No, we're not. We're putting the anode on this. Where are we going? In the back? Yeah. Alright. So let's pop that on. And I reckon two of us... So here's the plan. Paul puts the camera on the <laughs> eventually. And uh, we'll lift, two of us lift the back. Somebody else puts the transmission jack under the seat. Rest it down again. Which is the transmission jack? This one. This one. Okay. Are you sure you don't want to go with a plank to brace that? Yeah, the seat's a plank. <laughs> All right. So That's is fine. there a seat running side to side? Yeah, there's a seat here. Our thought ships. Our thought ships, yes. <laughs> Excellent terminology. <laughs> is that right? Yes. Yo ho ho. <laughs> Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Well done. <laughs> Okay, and low. Uh, low. Oh, 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 hang on. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, nice. All right. There's a little wire under the history. Yeah. Just, just slip it under the under the windscreen. Under the bar. Okay. Front. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You got it? Yeah, but it's nothing very stable, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we kind of need two of those. How about can we brace that with something? Or we could actually just walk the front out. Now the backs. It's probably not to do it that way, yeah. Just try. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You can be like the aeroplane tow truck. Yeah. Yeah, we got to do. Like go that way. Oh, 
All right, we'll sand for a while. We'll save you the boredom and then we'll show you where we get to. <laughs> We've done as much as we can be bothered, so it's time to clean up. Yes. What's your personal philosophy on Sanding hulls. Get it perfect, or no. near enough is good enough? Near enough is good enough. There is good enough already. Huh? I would just scrape the oysters off and just paint over the top. Well, that's true. <laughs> it's always going to be moving in the right direction. Mm. The thing for me is you've got to do it every year anyway. Yeah. And the thing to me is, like, obviously, you've got to think about the outboard. And can I recommend an E-Tech? <laughs> You're not going to win. Why do you want me to buy an E-Tech? Because they look like something that Sigourney Weaver would use <laughs> in one of her films from the 1980s. Which what kind seen. of films did she do in the 80s? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I think they were legal. Oh, have you ever anti fouled one of your own tinnies? Yeah. And how bad was it when you... It was already anti fouled Right. So I just cleaned it off and used a grey sealer type thing. Primer coat? Primer coat. And then it got special blue metal anti foul and did Yeah, that. the aluminium anti foul, yeah. the Trilux. Yeah. And how much of the anti foul did you take off? None. None? None. No, it's alright. <laughs> Zero. This is what I didn't realise. <laughs> Zero. If you read the Primacon brochure, yeah. and it says that Primacon's suitable for application over anti foul. Oh, that's alright then. Laughing. So, unknowingly, you've actually done something quite legitimate. Well, oh, that's good. Do you feel quite smug being like kind of a white collar worker when you see people covered in dust? White and blue. Pale blue. Pale blue. Yes. <laughs> I have very soft hands. I hate boats. No, you don't. Saying. Why do you own so many? I don't know. It's a disease. You got a disease. <laughs> You've got to sell one of your yachts. It goes hand in hand with Land Rover diseases. I think that. Yes. If Land Rover brought out a yacht, would you buy it? No. Because it would break down. Mm. <gasps> if I said, <laughs> I'd be upset and up in arms. Exactly. <laughs> I'd pay for that privilege. I've kept people in Birmingham employed for the last forty years. Now the dust settled on last night's sanding efforts. Uh, excuse the pun. I've had one last little go at this hull, and I'm now ready to start trying to fix a few little holes in it. So I'll show you what I got. The wire wheel here. I've used the um, die grinder and a wire wheel and it certainly gets anything loose off. So I'm pretty confident that whatever's left in this hull is actually reasonably well adhered to the aluminium on it. Because the last thing I do want is to paint something on to something loose and have that loose material come off and take all the new paint. But I'm pretty confident that's not gonna happen. Along here, there's actually a crack. So because it's long and thin, I'm gonna have a go at digging that up. I'm not in any way experienced with aluminium molding, but I'm gonna give it a go. I would tell you everything I know about TIG welding aluminium, but you probably don't have the 10 seconds it would take, so I think I'll just have a go. See what happens. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a wipe with acetone. One thing I do know is that the cleaner it is, the better. I had a fairly good grind on it, but to be honest with you, it's not looking amazing. I've got this welder pretty low at the moment. I have no idea how many amps it's going to take. I'm actually starting around 40. I'd rather start too cold than too hot. So this is what I've managed to do to my boat. It's pretty ugly. This little bit's all right. This is actually where I started. I went along here. It all started to go very wrong here. Then I kind of 
backed up here because I realised the crack went a bit further. It actually looks a little bit cold to be honest with you. Oh well. It is what it is. Before I push on now and start to put some primer on, I'll just show you a few other things about that weld. So this is the filler rod I used and in the end I ended up sort of pushing up towards about 80 amps. Even though I was worried the metal was thin and going to blow through, I think there's enough of a heat sink in this boat to handle more amps. I probably could have even gone a bit higher in the end. The other thing I'll say about welding up that crack was that it was easy to get a puddle on either side of the crack where the metal was clean, but all the impurities in the crack meant that the two puddles weren't meeting very readily, and that was really the problem there. Um, not sure if I should have tried to grind it out a bit more and then filled it back in. Someone who does welding for a living might better comment on that, and I'd be very interested to hear. I'll also just show you a couple of other repairs from last year. This one was a reasonably big hole, uh, so I put, made two squares of aluminium, it's a bit of old checker plate I had, drilled through both of them, so these plates are on the inside and the outside, put some Sikaflex on, used quite a long, long shank rivet to, to pull them together. So that patched that hole, some smaller holes just had rivets through them. And then round here somewhere, if I can find it, ah, up here was a much larger patch that sort of went over a, a hole here. None of those patches have leaked at all. So I'm pretty happy with those. They've been on for about two years now. The boat's lived in the water the whole time and they're, they're still completely watertight. So I still stand by this method of Sikaflex patches and rivets as a pretty good way to fix a hole in a boat. So here's what I'm gonna be using to paint. There are a couple of uh, international products Primacon is what I'm going to use uh, as the primer, the base coat for it. And then uh, Trilux 33, which is an NFL specifically for aluminium. You really want to make sure you never use anything but aluminium antifoul because the copper based ones will eat the aluminium. The thing I like about Primacon, I've used it a couple of times. I kind of wish maybe I'd use it last time. The epoxy was a, an attempt to use something that I thought would actually help sort of uh, bring some strength back to the hull and just didn't adhere well enough. The Primacon also has some anti-corrosive qualities for aluminium and it's suited to go over just about anything. They also specifically mention it to be suitable to put over old antifoul. So they say if you've got a hole of antifoul, you don't want to take it off but the antifoul you're putting on is not compatible with the old one. You can use a layer of Primacon between. So I'm pretty comfortable with this being able to go over the top of everything that's left on this hull and then give us a nice surface to put the antifoul on. So I'll uh, tape up the waterline and get painting. I'm gonna take the waterline for this one. It actually comes to about here, but I'm thinking I'm just gonna take it to this chine to start with. It's a nice point. Then the water light on this one hits the sponson around about the shoulder. The stern, I'm just gonna do a straight line, chine to chine. The accuracy of this taping's in keeping with the rest of the boat. Plans to do three coats of Primacon, three coats of antifoul. Running out of excuses, aren't I? Time to start painting. So pretty much done now. I'll give you a, a look over the boat quickly. I think it's come up pretty well. I'm pretty confident it's gonna stay for a while. Certainly gonna get me through another year, which is all antifoul really lasts for anyway. They say 18 months, but 
really I find about 12 is the most you get effective use out of them. So just in case you're wondering, I ended up getting a coat per litre. So because I had two four litre tins, I ended up doing four coats of primer, then four coats of antifoul. So I thought there's no point having a litre left over, so I just used them all up. And actually when I had a look, it does recommend uh, four or five coats for the uh, primer and then four coats for the antifoul as well anyway. So it's pretty much within the recommendations. And on this boat, a 4.6 meter boat, it pretty much used up every drop of both. So, so I'm pretty happy with that outcome. All right, so next week we'll push on, uh, get this boat back the right way around and start doing the electrics first, I think. We had that later in the list originally, but now I'm gonna, gonna get that happening a little bit earlier. So I'll be pushing on with that and a few other sort of small hull repairs. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, take care and I'll catch you next time, see ya.